<laughs> I'm Sheldon Simmons, and I've gone past 90. I'm looking at 91 coming here. So, so is that who everybody knows you by? Is Sheldon Simmons? Chevy. Chevy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I guess you've spent a lot of time on the water, then, haven't you? Seventy-two years. Okay, that's that's a lot of time. I got a while to go yet before I catch up with you. Um, we're going to tell everybody about the story uh, when you were sword fishing. Uh, apparently, it it must have been back in the early '60s. Yeah, it was. Uh, with Carl Action. You know who I'm talking about, Carl Action? Yeah, I know who you're talking about. And we were sword fishing, and he put me in a dory one morning, nine o'clock. He picked me up the next morning, four o'clock. So that's when God come to me. Yeah, before you before you get going and telling your story, you're going right to the end of it. We want to hear a lot in between. Uh, why did you end up in the dory so long? Well, it's like fog. And then they never had no radars. A few. Okay, and uh, how come they couldn't figure out right where you were? What What was the reason why you didn't end up where they thought you were? Well, I was just stubborn as a fish was. <laughs> he told me off of the bank into the gully. A lot of people in here know what I'm talking about, the gully of George's, between Brown and George's. And that's where I shed in thick fog. And Carl was looking where I stuck a fish, somewhere around that area. But see, the fish told me the opposite way. Like Buster Gorm said, it's where, where the fish were stuck. Buster was striker. Buster Gorm was uh, a So that's that's how I happened to get lost from the, the boat. He was looking in the wrong place. The Gordon Cranton, a block part, come out the next, next morning. And he happened to run into me to, because. There's no radars in days. He had a radar, and he's, he could see the dory, but I was frightened of him, and I rolled from the boat. was coming at me, I'd roll, but I had my fish tied to the boat. And that night, which is the night, you know what it is when you st stick a swordfish, you bleed it. In days, you had a, a thing you shoved in the gills, you bleed the swordfish. And the sharks got around. Mm -hmm. That was one of the sharks. Mm -hmm. And I fought sharks all night to keep them off from the fish, to eat my fish. Because <laughs> I didn't want to lose it. <laughs> what, a, what about, there was, there was something else that happened through that night uh, that you didn't know what was going to happen? And God come to me. There was something else that was that was quite big that was coming through the water though. What was that? A steamer. <laughs> a ship. And it put water right in my dory. It could not run me down and I had the fish still hanging on my dory. But I couldn't roll, you know, when towing at. And it went by me put water in my dory. But God come to me and says you live for me. I had three boys home. And I see one of them had night, I think. I think they might they might all be. Might all be, I can't tell. <laughs> but <clears throat> he lived for me. And I come in and went to Stony that night. One night went to Stony Island Church. And Tom Towns was the minister. And the big dust and the fellows got me to go to the prayer room with them. And so I went to the prayer room with them, and I come out, and when they had closing 
service. I went home, knock on the door, was Tom Townsend. He come in, he said, I see someone following you. Well, you know, that rang a bell, because when I was in the dory, God come to me and said, you live for me, and you'll see your sons again. When Tom Townsend come and told me that, same thing. What have I got to believe? That we, well, we hear things, but we don't, I don't know how to put it, Steve, dear, but we don't listen, I guess. We put it that way, we don't listen. I thought I was smart, I guess, because I got in to see the boys, and I didn't do as God told me to out there. I was home. And you know what young men would do? That bottle. And that wasn't and that wasn't the way. For God come me, he said that hit the way, son. That hit the way. I was so proud to get in to see my family again. That you know, we hear things and we say, Yeah, you don't believe that. I don't lost time by her. But God is talking to you. And you know yourself, he talked to you, didn't he? He talked to you. But we don't listen, we think it's something, we don't, I don't know, we don't want to hear it, or whatever it is, but, but he didn't leave me. See, he didn't leave. I left him, but he didn't leave me. He kept pegging at my heart a few years before I come to the sentences. Like, and listen, what Tom Townsend said. When Tom Townsend said some, someone was following you, it was, a, it was that prayer room with the gang of men. So what do you got to believe when a minister tells you that? Then I turned and I listened. I listened to God. And I went to ch church. And that's how I come to be here tonight. My first wife, she was this is Tony on the same night. We come home when Tom House comes to Hayward. Who oh, I got to believe tonight? That the reason I sat in here and that steam went by me put water in my dory. That she was the big as this church. The lights is the same way. That God says, My way, not yours. My way. Live for me. My way. So, if you hear a note on the outside of Christ, if you hear his voice, we say, we don't hear, to hear it, but it's something somewhere in, a, in a, between here and up here, your heart, that God is ministering to you, but we don't listen. I didn't listen until Tom Townsend come and told me that someone followed me. Well, out there, the same thing. God was watching me in that dory that night. The steamer went by me, but water my dory. And I said, you know, I, it, it, bing bing, there was something in your mind that, that we don't, well, we push it away, don't we? I push it away. We don't listen. But when Tom Town came to me, he said, I see someone following you. What you got to believe when when a minister come tell you someone following you? I thought the same thing, see, but I said no, it ain't that ain't nothing. That's just illusion. But it ain't my friends, it ain't illusion. It's God talking to you. And then I said here tonight, if it hadn't been for God, I have my doubts I'd be sitting here trying to tell you people that God is the way. And I've tried and strived my life to live the way he wants me to. And I listen, as Sean said tonight, about Hatfield. If there was any way that I had to live home alone in my house, and my dad told Sean's dad, to give me stuff, so to, you know what I mean, to live till he come home, he's on the island. So, what have I got to believe? That 
God was with me, and then I met this fellow here. <laughs> Downhill ever since. <laughs> you even had to fight your way on the wharf, didn't you, Sheldon? <laughs> but it's a blessing to look down to see all of you for people tonight looking at me. But God is the way in my life, and I, I've got no big education. Sixth grade education I got. But what I see and what I believe in tonight, God is is there's a good many people, but we don't listen. The same as I did. I didn't listen. I thought I was smart. I thought I was smart, but I wasn't. God was, had more power than any minister anybody got to come to, come to a fellow like me. That, well, I lost my wife, first wife, and I turned to the bottle. See, but God says, I hate the way. I hate the way. Believe me, friends, God has got more power than anybody, even our pastors. He's got more power than anything <laughs> in this world. Yeah. I don't know what Steve wants any more questions to ask me. <laughs> <laughs> so you're you're quite thankful then when you turn to God that, that you've lived the rest of your life for God? And yeah. is that what you plan on doing, well, living the rest I, of it? I plan on it. <laughs> I've only... I've only 91, so a few more years left to hope yet. My dad was 91 when he died. So yeah. it's it's good to look down tonight to see did you fellows listen to me? Because I just a scab old raft. They all thought oh, I so. no. But God look, see something in me that other people around me does because I got so many friends where I go even from even from Lockport to come it's to see me that I Gordon was with Gordon Cranton the night he picked me up in my dory rolling from my life I didn't know what I know I had three boys home it's, I'll tell you friends God has got more power over us than any minister or any human being. But we don't pay no heed. We don't pay no heed to him. And we're too busy. Too busy with the world. Put it that way. Making a living, making money. We thought that's all, but that ain't it. God is the way. And that's the way of my life. And I, I see my boys, some of my boys here tonight. <coughs> I just praise God for him. And I praise God for seeing him. Getting me to come up here tonight to tell everybody that God is the way in your life. We'll be ministered to sometime or other before you die. Because that night the steamer went by me. Well, I, I don't know how to, how to put it. My boys come right in my dormitory, but Everything come to your man's mind. And God come and said, live for me. Live for me. And here was a shark eating a swordfish, trying to eat a swordfish in the middle of the night. At four o'clock that morning, Gordon Carney come. And he, he must have heard the news. Uh, wind died right out, start cam. And I could hear Carl talking with Gordon Carrington. Gordon Carrington had a red eye. And he said, I see something here, but I can't get close to it. And I said, that's Chevy Simmons. <laughs> and he stopped rolling. And then he come alongside. And I could hear the engine going at the night. Dark. But I had a watch. I could see in the night. You folks all what you remember them. It was just 12 o'clock and Gordon Cranton picked me up. From, 4 from 9 o'clock that morning to 4 o'clock the next morning, I was in that dory, rowing for my life. God showed me the way. Showed me the way to how to live. 
and I've strived that way since I've chased him. You know, that's just Sean Hatfield and Bob Parker, our pastors. And wherever I go, there's always somebody knows me. We have four churches together, and it, where, we, we, wherever I go, is always somebody pat me on the shoulders to see what God has done. I praise God for this man because I have run in with Oscar Ross. You know who I'm talking about? He was more like Steve. He come get me, take me. Now Brother Steve comes and takes me around different places because I can't drive. They took my license. But I just praise God tonight to look in and over the audience here that you folks, if God talks to you, it ain't somebody else. It's some, we all say a little bird, but it ain't a bird. And you, when God <clears throat> comes in your life, it's God who's talking, not a bird. That's why I all thought it. God was, well, I don't know how to put it. He's supposed to ask the question. <laughs> I'm going to ask the question to everybody out here. Uh, who's, who's thankful right tonight that God showed up alongside a Chevy in the, the dory so he would be able to be here tonight? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Yep. Amen. <laughs> you know, he doesn't want to stop talking now. <laughs> you, know, you don't think of these these things, but because when God comes to me in that dory that night, the steam went by me, put water in it. We don't. It's. I don't know. Eh. That F. You hear that F word? Eh. You don't believe that? But when the, everything spooled away, I'm still here. And Tom Downs come told me that he sees someone follow me. A minister come tell you someone follow, see someone following you. Well, why did what did I see? I didn't see God that night. That steam I put water in my dory. He come. He said, "You live for me." What else I got to believe? There were three sons home that needed a dad, and out there and rolling around the dory. Didn't know where, where I'd ever see him again. You know what? I understand what I mean. It's God working, but we don't believe it. We don't. We don't think of them things. Ah, eh. i talk to different people. Ah, eh, you don't believe that. Ah, eh. no, I hate that word. Ah, eh. <laughs> <laughs> because it's God it does talk to people, but we don't listen. See, it goes into one ear and the other. Now, same way with me. It went to one ear and went up to the other, but I, when I got up to the land, <coughs> I was all set. I didn't believe it. <coughs> but when Tom Townsend come to me and told me that he sees someone following me, that's when I start thinking, my friend, that's when you start thinking what you, where you was when God told you to live for him. But when you got to turf, you forgot him. I forgot him. I was proud that I could get around what no my friends. It's God living in you. He wants you. So I'm not just sitting up there telling you that because I'm ninety odd year old and I was only a young man and I've been thought living for the Lord since now quite many years. And this has come Lead me around, my friend. Oh, you are my friends because I'm looking down at night. Just praise God tonight for you for listening to me. That God is out there somewhere, and He wants you to be His friends, mm -hmm. His people, mm -hmm. God's people. Well, you to ask us a Thank you very much. <laughs> I didn't have to ask any questions because you told us the story anyway. <laughs>
one thing about it, my friend. <laughs> I believe I got my, I got sat down now. My children sat down now, grandchildren. Just praise God for them. That they took my boat from me. Daddy, you ain't doing this. Daddy ain't doing that. <laughs> Daddy's head <heading> nuts. <laughs> a family is a family. The same way the family of God. You were all a family of God, but you wouldn't be hidden like you were. Amen. Thank you very much. Sir. I mean, you are. I know.